Hi, Ray Hayden here, and this video is kind of a mixed bag of technolog technological update. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the Asus Zenfone 2. I have a lot of uh, people viewing my uh, videos that I made on the Asus Zenfone 2 front-facing camera. Now, with that, this video right here happens to be a test video on the front-facing camera on the ZTE Axon 7 phone. Now, I don't know how I'm going to like or dislike this video or not, but you should love it. And should say so. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the thing about the front-facing camera on the Asus Zenfone 2 is mine had stopped working. Uh, I had made a series of videos. Anytime I found another way to get the front-facing camera to work, I made a video about it and I put it on YouTube. Uh, every time I found a way to fix it, Asus would do an update, Android would do an update, and that stopped working. So I couldn't get the front-facing camera to work again. Well, I eventually soft-bricked my phone by trying to backdate to uh, uh, an Asus operating system and that did not work well. Marshmallow. I was trying to go back to Marshmallow to do something and in the process I soft bricked my phone. I wanted to make a video on how to upgrade the Lineage OS and I never got to be able to do that because I bricked my phone. So the uh, last thing that I did though is I, I, I didn't think that Asus was going to update the phone. I don't think they were going to fix the front facing camera. So I made the, the decision to change over to the Lineage OS operating system. Now, uh, I don't know, because the phone wasn't made for that, so I don't know if it's necessarily going to work absolutely perfectly in every way. Uh, I heard rumor from somebody else who heard a rumor that uh, the Pixel Master camera does not work perfectly well. And, well, here's the big news story. It wasn't working perfectly well from Asus. So I decided that I would upgrade my phone to Lineage OS. I went ahead and did that. Uh, let me mention something. If you're familiar with CyanMod, C-Y-A-N-M-O-D, CyanMod, they became Lineage OS. So Lineage OS began with 14. So um, I upgraded through them to NuGet 7.1.1. And then this is the procedure that I did. And I discuss it a couple of times on the uh, discussion in the descriptions below. Please check the descriptions below. Sometimes I'll have really good information in there for you. So um, anything I might have forgotten to put in the video, I'll put down there in the description below. Anyways, uh, I, I had upgraded to Lineage OS 7.1.1 Nougat, and then I uh, went to the Google, the Google Play Store on my phone, and I uninstalled the Pixel Master camera. I shut the power completely off. I didn't restart. I shut the power completely off. I turned the power back on. I went back into the Play Store, I reinstalled the Pixel Master camera application and then it still didn't work. So I powered the phone off again, powered the phone back on, and then my front facing camera worked and it worked right up until the point when I soft bricked my phone. So that was my error on that part. But I don't know how well it was going to, it wasn't absolutely positively perfect. Every now and then I would have a little glitch here or there, but the front facing camera always showed up. So that was always a nice thing. The next thing I want to talk about is a device that I've been using with this camera over here professionally, and this is the AGP Tech. Uh, I call it the 284 device. I don't think this one really has a number to it. But if it's an easy cap, easy capture, easy cap device, uh, which is orange and black, I believe, uh, it does say 284. So I call it the 284 because actually it's identical as far as the connections that you make. They're absolutely identical. Uh, different name, that's all. It's just a name brand. Ford and Chevy, right? Uh, but it is the same exact thing, unlike the Ford and Chevy, um, inside. So with that, I've been using that with this camera over here, but I can also use it with this camera over here. Um, this camera uses a video tape, the mini DV tape. I don't know if you're familiar with those or not, but that's what went into this particular camera. Uh, I never used tape in this. I actually used a different device. And this is called, it says DTE on it up here. I don't know if you can see that really well. DTE, that's direct to edit. That means I record video on, this. basically it's a computer hard drive in here uh, with a proprietary circuit board that allows me to record video. And this is a screen with numbers on it when it's lit up. It doesn't have any video. It's not like a little camera. It's not like a little monitor or anything like that. This just has digital information on it. Uh, anyways, but I could record into a number of different formats on this particular device. And, but it used FireWire, and that's the problem. Nobody supports FireWire anymore. And who, who wants to pay a licensing fee, right? You use you know, USB. USB 2.0 is, and 2.1 and 3.0 is far as superior to the speed of the data transmission. So 
you know, it's kind of dead technology as far as that goes. But that's all the, the only output that this camera had, except for it has what we call compos uh, component video. That's the red, green, blue wires that you see. Doing top to bottom, red, blue, green, okay? Uh, they take the video signal, which is usually just the yellow wire. Use this other device here. On the yellow wire, which is video only and composite video, component video splits up the video signal. It allows me to record a higher quality video. And in fact, when I'm using the red, green, and blue with the AGP tech and this little magical wire right here, I can record 1080p video from this camera. Uh, I wouldn't trust it out in the field uh, as a primary recording device itself. So I just, I'm experimenting with it in the office to see if I can get a whole lot, uh, a whole lot more use out of this particular camera. Cause I love this camera because what this camera has that the other one does not is it has all these manual uh, rings and settings. It has a whole lot of manual control. Uh, I can control each part of the video scene as I want to. I can open up the hours and everything like that. Now this camera has a lot of these controls, but they're digital. So, and I can operate them. I experimented with it and I can change the settings while I'm recording. So that's nice, um, but it also limits the usability of this particular camera over here more. Now this is the uh, Canon Vixia. This is the HR500, sorry, HFR500 version of it. It's got two or three generations after that at this point. Uh, but I got it for a really great price, and it shoots fantastic video. In fact, it shoots better video than I could possibly imagine, uh, and it's almost criminal for how little I paid for the camera. So, um, But I love this camera for the glass. It has excellent glass in the, in the camera lens here. It's an incredible unit, and I, I love it to pieces, and I'd like to get a whole lot more use out of it. But it is bigger, it's heavier, and uh, now I have to have all these wires you see hanging on there with it. Uh, this camera over here is incredibly light, it's fast, it's easy to use, takes up very little room in my bag, uh, but it does require that I use a microphone mixer. Uh, one of the things about this uh, camera over here is it has an XLR microphone input right into the side of it, so I can make use of the XLR, and this has what is known as phantom power. I'm not getting really technical or anything, but anybody using microphones or anything understands phantom power for these little lapel microphones like the news people wear and stuff like that, they don't have a battery in them. You can get a battery pack for them, but uh, and you can even make them wireless. But uh, if you have XLR, you need uh, a phantom power unit to send power out to the microphone. Uh, and this camera has that. This camera over here simply can't. The XLR connection is about the size of the camera itself. So uh, I need to have my microphone mixer with that, and I use the more technology, the Shure M267, SCM, SCM267 microphone mixer. I made a video about that that's on my channel as well. Now, let me go back to the connections here. This allows me to connect up to the AGP tech. Now, this is a device that's really made for video gamers. If you want to play a video game and you want to watch the game while you're playing, what you need to do is connect an HDMI cable to your device. Like, say, for example, I want to connect Let's pretend this is a gaming device of some sort. Game Boy, Game Box, whatever they call these things now. I don't own one, so I don't know. But you plug in your HDMI cable to your gaming device instead. It's not a camera. And you can then plug it into this device in HDMI. It's full size, by the way. My camera, it's a mini. But for this demonstration, it doesn't matter. And then you plug it directly into here. Now, I record on a 64 gigabyte thumb drive which I plug in to here. This circle that you see right here is actually a red light and this will light up and flash and everything while it's recording. This funny looking indent right here, that's the record button. If I press and hold that, the red light goes on saying that it's recording and then this light here will go on and off and then it'll start flashing steadily, meaning that it's receiving data and I'm recording. That is quite a bit like this device right here. So this was like over 500 bucks when I bought this thing. This thing here was less than 100 bucks with the thumb drive, which I picked up locally, uh, I don't know, for 20 bucks or whatever like that. You can get them cheaper if you shop around. But uh, for this device and the thumb drive, I paid less than $100, and it replaces the $500 device. The HDMI connection is phenomenal. It works very, very well. 
And on this device here, it's powered up with USB 2.0. So I take my USB 2.0 cable, and I plug it right into the side of this device, and here's another experiment that I've been playing around with quite a bit in the field. I had picked up from eBay <laughs> this little device right here. It's just a battery pack that you normally would use to recharge your cell phone. Uh, your cell phone battery gets low, you want to recharge it in the field, um, you bring a battery pack with you because you know you're going to use your phone heavily all day, you're doing a lot of internet browsing and stuff like that, uh, whatever it is you need to do, but you want to recharge your battery at the end of the day so that you don't run out of pa battery power at a bad time. Well, if I plug this in, now the big kicker here was this runs on 2 amps. So I have a 2.1 amp uh, connection up here. So if I plug this in, first off, notice the screen is black. When I plug this baby in, it's going to do some crazy things on the screen, but I see a steady light. That says 100%. You're going to see some crazy things going on, one of which is a number flashing over here. Uh, that's telling me that the power is draining. More importantly, it tells me that this power is on. Now, this green light is going to keep flashing here because it's looking for a signal. It's not going to find it because there's no battery hooked up to the back of the camera and I'm not turning it on. Otherwise, this green light would go steady. The blue light means there's power. The blue light means there's power. And if I press on this indent, it touches a button on the inside board, circuit board, and it would start recording. So, if this camera has a battery plugged in the back of it, and I have this device with me, I can record on the little digital card that's in the side of the camera. The little door there, I flipped the door. But there's a little card, there's an SDXC card there. I could have used an SDXC card here too, but USB 2.1 is good. Uh, and it records great video and I can record in the field on the camera via battery and on this device onto a thumb drive via battery as a safety backup to make sure that I really recorded what I wanted to and um, it, would, it would do that. So it's completely battery. I don't need to be plugged into the wall for any of that and this microphone on this camera works pretty good. I'm not, obviously I'm not wearing a microphone because I can't connect it to my phone. I've tried a couple of different ways to do that and I've not had success with that yet. So let's disconnect this puppy. And that's how I connect that. Now, but the AGP Tech or the EasyCap 284, whichever device you're using, they're basically made for gamers and let me grab that USB cable again, or I'm sorry, the HDMI cable. The way this works is if you have an older device that only has the video output or whatever, you make the proper connections, they're color coded, you can't mess this up. This one here, these two are tied together. That's the audio cables, left and right audio. They're tied together with that little fat tether right there, okay? So you can't screw this up. They're uh, color coded, you know, yellow to yellow, red to red, white to white, green to green, blue to blue. You can't mess it up. There's only one place you can plug this in, and like that computer build I talked about, you can, if, you, if you're forcing it, you're breaking it, stop what you're doing and think about it. Um, this device here, it's going to be hard to see, but there's a little arrow on this piece of plastic. The arrow is up. Okay, so to me this looks upside down, but the arrow means that's the upside. There's nothing on this side, but on this side here there's a little arrow. It's black on black, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I plug that in right here. All right, now that's not the most secure feeling connection that I've ever had on a device, but it is what it is and it allows me to connect this other device. So, if I've plugged in this set of connections, then the other connection I have to make is the HDMI out. On this device, the HDMI out is the, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit. Hang with me. There we go. On the HDMI output, that's all you got. So, you know, I have questions on this video. People ask me all the time, Ray, how, how do I connect it up to my TV? I, all my HDMIs on my TV are filled up. I'll tell you in a second. So you only have one output. The only output you have is HDMI. You have to use HDMI out. And the problem that people are having, I think, is that they have an old device like this particular camera back here that I have. I don't use the old video games. I don't connect the old video games to my computer or my TV or anything like that. So I don't have that issue that other people are having. But I get it, okay? So if this is your old video game, but your video monitor has HDMI input, but it only has one. I do have, I have a, a, an old monitor. I have a 15 inch monitor. It only has one HDMI input. So what do you do? I have three HDMI things that I want to plug in. What do I do? Well, uh, this, this is an adapter. 
this particular HDMI is an adapter because this is a mini HDMI input. They're different sizes, okay? Another thing that they have is they have, it's kind of like a box, just like this. This has an HDMI input and an output. It's only got one input and one output. Well, they make this little cable connector and it basically, it's like a splitter, um, but it'll have uh, two or three and hopefully three because you lose one. I'll explain that in a second too. But the box, and this isn't it, I'm just using this for a demonstration because you see there's more than one HDMI thing on it. The ones that I see have three, okay? Now let me explain that. If you have a connector, right, you, you, you need more, basically you need more HDMI options for your TV, for your monitor. If you have one that has three, and you have one input in the back of your computer, uh, back of your monitor, you're gonna unplug that. So what happens next? You gotta plug something back into it. You only have the one. If you have three outlets on this new adapter thing, and I don't have one to show you, but, but if you have three inputs and you just unplugged one, that's going into one of those. So <laughs> you, had, you have three, but one of them's gonna get used, so you can only plug in two more, okay? The other thing is that the adapter that I was looking at that I thought was kind of interesting had little buttons. So, you, you know, if you want to use your game, you know, uh, press number one because that's your game is connected to input number one. You want to use your television, input number two, like your cable TV, satellite TV or whatever it is has an HDMI probably. And yes, that is a cat back there. Just make that note. It probably picked his head up. That's a cat. <laughs> Anyways, and whatever else you want to hook up. You want to hook up a video camera? Not that one. You yeah, hook up this one. Then that's another one. So you want to hook up a camera, you want to watch, you know, if you want to make a video, if you want to record a video. I remember parties years ago, people would have a video camera set up and people would see each other on a monitor and it was just a funny thing or whatever. Don't drink. Anyways, so people, if you want to record what you're doing, like say I want to take this camera, right? And I, I want to plug it in to this. This might be confusing, so follow me slowly here, okay? I take the camera plug, right? I plug it in. So the camera's hooked up. Now it's an output on the camera. The output can only plug in here. That's a video input. I don't need to connect anything else to my drive. I don't need to send the video signal anywhere else, okay? For me, all right, all I do is I connect my USB thumb drive, okay, it just plugs in. It only goes in one way, right? That's what I love about this stuff, it only goes in one way. I'm recording on this device. So the video is coming in and it's going out over here and it's recording onto this device. This box is what allows me to do that. The power cord plugs in over here. You have to have a power cord, all right? So we discussed before, we can use that battery pack out there, or you can use a USB thing, you know, the, you plug it into the, uh, an outlet, and then you plug the other side into your device, like to charge your phone, bingo, bango. All right, the video is coming in here, the power is coming in over here, and the video is recording right here. And this gives me indication with a red flashing light that the video is recording. So that's very important, okay? If you were using the other device, and you can only use one or the other, you can't use both. If I wanted to use some old video game or some other kind of computer or something like that, uh, or other kind of device, I would have to plug in this way. All right. And I would make my connections as appropriate to the color-coded wire, so you connect the right color to the right color. But I would have to unplug ugh, the HDMI. All right. And the reason for that is because you can only record one signal at a time. And when I'm using these cables here, okay, this records 1080p, but not if you're using the yellow wire. It cannot record uh, 1080p with the yellow wire. It records 720p, all right? So it records a lesser version of high definition at 720p. If you use the component video, however, the red, green, and blue ones, it records 1080p. If you're using HDMI, unplug that device, that group of wires there, unplug that, and plug in your HDMI cable. That's all you need to plug in. This carries the video and the audio signal. So you don't have to plug in the red and white for, video, uh, for audio. You don't have to worry about that. This takes the audio and the video out, and you plug it right in, and it records right on your thumb drive. And that's how that uh, particular thing works. And I'm sorry I stayed on that subject for a while, but um, people ask me about it, and I figured I might as well toss it into this update video. 
And so that's the AGP tech. And the other thing I discussed was the um, battery pack. I just picked this up on, on eBay. And if you want to use a battery pack to run the AGP tech or the easy cap, um, you need to make sure that it has an output. This has two outputs on it. One of them's one amp. I think it's one amp, 1.5. That won't work. You have to have the other one. And this other one is 2.1 amp output. So you have to have that. It has to be 2.1 output, 2.1 amp output to uh, work with this device to power it, to, to make sure that it powers up. So with that, those are my experiments. I've been experimenting with using uh, the EasyCap or the AGP Tech with this camera in the field. It's been doing a phenomenal job as a safety backup of everything I record. Uh, I can connect it up to this camera here and record 1080p video. Uh, I still experiment with that, but I haven't really uploaded a lot with the uh, with that on YouTube, and then um, what else? I've been I've been experimenting with the front-facing camera, and this is an experiment video with that as well, uh, because I don't think the video is as good. But we can make HD video with these. But I think the main camera, the back camera, shoots much better video, and I have better control. I have more manual controls over the main camera than I do the front-facing camera. So. That's our update for today, and uh, look forward to some other videos I got coming up uh, planned for the next couple of months. I have a couple of videos planned out uh, that I want to work on uh, that I think other people will enjoy as well. So with that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and make comments as you see fit. Until I see you in the next video, take care and be well.